Hey, this is Dave with the Shepherd School, and we're back for part two of making our homemade foundry for metal casting. Um, this is part two for two reasons. Number one, YouTube only lets me upload about 15 minutes at a time. And uh, the second reason is I got to stick this thing in the oven, so I had to wait for the wife to go to work. So I'm taping this all on my own without any help. So what we're going to do is I need the top to be cured for you know to hold the heat in when we put the charcoal lid to cure the uh, actual foundry and we're going to do this in the oven we're going to put it at 250 degrees for about three hours uh, maybe two it just depends how long it takes for it to stop steaming and then we're going to uh, up the heat to about 400 degrees and keep it there for about six hours okay and i'm going to flip it upside down uh, before I put it in so the steam can escape rather than condensing on the top of the lid uh, Which probably is why Gentry used the cardboard foundation. I found doing this uh, with the sheet metal forms using the uh, uh, Flashings and, and those sorts of things the things that I did so far That I thought would make it easier. I should have just went 100% by the book and done it like a cookbook rather than an idea book but I guess the proof's in the pudding and if I can actually melt me some aluminum then I'll be happy with it but I sure really don't want to go back and have to do this again even though it's really not that hard so I'm going to flip it upside down and we're going to put it in the oven and we'll come back uh, about three hours from now and check it before we up the heat okay so it's uh, the next morning I spent about two and a half three hours with it on 250 and then I jumped it up to four and let it 400 degrees and let it sit there for about six hours and then what I did is I just turned the stove off and let it cool with the oven door closed you don't want to shock it when it's hot like that so you just let it ride It's a little lighter, but it's still pretty heavy, and it's it's a lot like that fire brick. Okay. There we go, and that's ready to go. And now we're just going to heat up the uh, the axle foundry and see what happens. Okay, so uh, we've let this thing sit a couple days, uh, not because it needed to, but just because I had to get some time to, uh, to mess with it. But I've been keeping it into this uh, garbage bag so it doesn't dry out too much, and so we're going to fire it. I've got some charcoal, really don't matter what kind, but we're going to put in a double layer. and uh, a little bit of good starting fluid. Get the starting fluid away. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna like this. And uh, let it get started. Once it's started and ignited good, we'll put in another double layer. And when it, uh, we'll keep doing that. And when it gets about two thirds full, we'll hook the air up to it and uh, put the lid on it and uh, start blowing some air and get this thing started. Nice. Don't want to do the air until uh, we've had a time for it to heat up because we don't want to get super hot before we melt it out or, or uh, um, vaporize some of that water because otherwise it would just crack and shatter. If you've ever put a, a pond rock in a fire and had it explode, 
that's the reason that we're doing this in stages okay so we'll come back after that's burned out a little bit and show you what it looks like as we put some more in there all right so I thought about it a little bit and since I put that thing on a wheelbarrow or a lawnmower I decided to put some some bricks in front of the wheel so the thing wouldn't roll and I also figured it's about time for me to start working on my blower so here's my pipe that I use as the form a little bit of that flashing and I just made a little cone a little goodwill hair dryer for a couple bucks like that and I cut some little um, slots in there so I can bend it around and, and tape it to it I don't plan on this thing lasting forever, um, but it's a good start. So I'm going to take this on here. Yeah, I know that's uh, kind of jerry-rigged. When I get around to making a real one, I'm going to make sure that I cut a, a safety slot here and plug it with some lead. So in case I ever have a crucible collapse on me and the lead uh, or the molten aluminum wants to try to flow back into the blower, it'll melt through the lead and, uh, you know, flow out rather than back into my blower. Uh, it's going pretty good, a little bit li longer. Going pretty good in there. It's lit pretty good. Here in a second, I'll add some more charcoal uh, when that on the top gets all red hot, like on the bottom down there. But it's it's going pretty good. All right, it's not ready for this yet, but I just can't resist. Okay, uh, really need to have the top on this, and it's gonna kick out some some sparks. But uh, I'm gonna put the blower on low just so you can see what will happen, okay? And that's about as hot as I can stand it. Well, not really, but... That gets really, really hot. All right, it's pretty full. The charcoal is lit. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the uh, top on. Okay. Put the top on. I'm going to put the heat on to it, the air to it. And uh, let this thing go until everything gets nice and red hot. That thing got out around. Now, like I showed before, sparks and stuff's gonna come out of here to make sure I don't catch anything on fire. I got some fire extinguisher and a bucket of water over there behind the camera. Once this thing, uh, everything gets red hot, I'm gonna turn the air off, take a fire brick. It really doesn't matter what kind of brick. I'm gonna use fire brick because I got it. Plug up the, uh, the top hole and the air hole and then uh, just let this thing cool for uh, you know four or five hours or so and then we're gonna clean out all the ash okay so let's turn the air on oh yeah Probably should have had a bigger hole. All right. So we're just gonna let that ride like that, and uh, pretty much that's it. That's it. I'll come back after everything's cooled off and show you what it looked like on the inside. I guess that's not it. But that right after I turned the uh, camera off, I ended up having a daggum blowtorch. That is bad. That is wicked. Let's just see how hot that
I could definitely, definitely melt some metal with that. That reminds me of Wyatt's Torch. If any of y'all saw that movie or read that book. Of course, if you've done one, you've probably done the other. I just can't get over that. I guess all kids like to play with fire. The, uh, Ooh, I better get that out. Alright, so, the fuel burned up, so we, we plugged that in, those holes a little bit, best we could, make a little heat retained in there, and then we're just going to let it ride like that and cure for uh, three or four hours, but to tell you the truth, I'm going to move it a little farther under the carport because it's about to rain, that's why I moved it almost under the carport just a second ago because uh, I would hate for that thing to be burning hot and the water to get in there because if it's anything like uh, hot lead and water that would be what I call a bad day so I'm really just going to leave this thing sit till tomorrow morning and then we'll check it out then alright here's our uh, completed forge I fired it a couple days ago and just let it uh, cool down and uh, uh, it's a lot like a brick, which is actually what we were making. Pretty, pretty solid. Okay, this is still a little rough. Um, some of the uh, foundry that I pounded in to fix where I had holes, a little bit of that cracked off where I didn't squeeze it in real good. But uh, for the most part, it's pretty solid. So. Uh, <sighs> As soon as I have finished building all my foundry tools and making me some ingot molds, I'm going to come out here and, and cast some stuff and uh, we'll see how that works. So you can look forward to that. Uh, so anyway, you can always catch us online at www.tngun.com. Thanks. I've got a plan. Fits my point of view. I'm getting